what's up, what up, man? Welcome back to Swipe a Lockdown Radio. If it's your first time here on the channel, smash the subscribe and give the uh, members an option. Give it a little overlook. There's a preview video there if you hit uh, join members. So on this video, I'm going to get into some confinement stories. I'm going to kind of uh, catch everybody up on uh, some things that were already said on this channel. Um, and I'm referring to, uh, I've done a few interviews on... Uh, one was Florida Prison Talk. Um, shout out to his channel. I, I was talking about uh, a time when a confinement officer <clears throat> kind of used me. Uh, you know, he made me crash another dude. Um, I've also just did a video. It was called Black Jesus, where I'm explaining the mace that they use in confinement back there. Um, and there was one other video that I spoke about. Oh, I've done another video where. I was in H dorm and hey look, I was in a really bad dorm. It was you know this they called the horror dorm for H. Ha, I didn't have any bros in this dorm. I had to protect myself. I'm around dudes with uh, I'm, a, I'm a lot I'm around a lot of weirdos and, and I'm, I'm in a bad dorm. Uh, it's it was the it was the worst dorm in this uh, facility. Okay, I had got a few DRs. Okay, and I'm gonna explain what happened there. If you haven't catch that, I'll put it in the end screen. Look, I had to get a knife, okay? I had to get a knife. I eventually got caught with that knife, okay? Um, and that dorm was crazy because I didn't have a lot of time, okay? And I was around dudes that are never getting out. But uh, what happened here is in confinement, I'm gonna try to explain this as best I can, okay? It's a recap of those videos, but um, you know, when people when you're doing interviews, people can, they ask you, you know sporadic questions and I may have wanted to get into the video for the channel for you guys but if I'm asked something I'm gonna truthfully answer it but um look in confinement there was two officers that I was really really afraid of um, well everybody was when you get back there okay when you go back to confinement it's the end of the road it is essentially um, it's the prison it's the prison underneath the prison it's the back it's the back of the prison it's where the worst of the worst go. Now, I'm not saying you have to be a bad person to be in confinement. Look, if somebody disrespects you in prison, you have to do what you have to do. You have to stand up for yourself. Okay, if they steal something from you, whatever it is, um, you're, you're not around the, the greatest people in prison. There's not a bumper sticker with stick figures and it's, uh, hey, my kid's in prison, yours is not. It's not like that. But you still have to, um, you have to stand up for yourself. You have to respect. You have to just keep, you have to keep it real inside of prison, man. Um, you can't let people step all over you. And sometimes you will land, land in prison. Uh, and, well, yeah, that happens too. But sometimes you will land in uh, in confinement. Um, uh, I, I, listen, I, I don't bo boost about confinement uh, personally. Um, you know, there is a big debate here in the world where the people think that the death penalty. Uh, you know, and p political politically, people are against the death penalty. Some people are for the death penalty. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I don't know where you stand with that, but um, just underneath the death penalty is confinement. Okay, people that, um, you know, it, dudes that are on death row, for example, uh, they're living in confinement, okay? They don't have a big open, uh, they don't have a, a, a dorm where they get to interact with people every day. They're confined in confinement. When you're in prison and you, um, if you get, let's say you get caught for maybe, um, there's an inmate that gets caught for stabbing another inmate, okay? That might come off rough on the edges, but you don't know what that dude, the other person was doing to that dude for him to have to stab him, okay? It happens a lot and people don't get caught. And even if they get caught, they only do confinement time. But there's instances where it's bad enough to where the prison has to put them in CM. CM is... Uh, is uh, what well, we've done videos on that. I've had I've had a dude I was in prison with get CM'd for this exact example, but it's 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 you know if you get into a fight in prison, it's thirty days in the box. You get back out in Florida, you'll go back to the same dorm that you went into confinement from. But if you go to CM, you, the rest of your bid is in the box. Okay, um, you know there's a lot to say here about this subject. Okay, so I want to go back to the first time that uh that i went to confinement okay this is going to be my second time in prison okay i've done the story about this i had some things going on at the house look i was stressed out um i mentally wasn't there okay 
I don't care which channels you watch, um, you go through like a depression in prison. You're you're incarcerated, man. Um, it's not a county jail stay. You're not going to get out in a couple weeks. You have to cross years off the calendar. Okay. It will. It will. It, it, it's enough to. It's a big burden on any man. When you uh do something to go to confinement, um, man, it really intensifies that uh that depression and that down feeling. Okay. This is a. This is a place of. This is a place of bullies to the maximum level. This is a place of violence in the maximum level. You could be the dude who doesn't get involved on any of the dumb stuff, just doing your time, not even in there for a bad charge. You could somebody like somebody like you know, somebody like myself, somebody like so many like I know. You know, and you just see so many things like you hear on these channels. It's gonna make you um, down, man. And going to confinement intensifies that because, at least in the everyday life of confine of prison, you can talk to people that are like-minded, like like I was just explaining here. You can find you can find dudes inside of there that may that may have done some some heinous things, okay. But you can really see the real person in them, okay. That's if you choose to talk to people like that. You could also find dudes that really didn't do anything um you know most dudes in prison okay I, i've said this again it all revolves around drugs okay it doesn't matter if they were using the drugs or selling the drugs it doesn't matter if they were pawning something and stole something for the drugs it doesn't matter if they burglarized someone's house for the drugs it's it's i'm telling you drugs is as a big issue with the prison system but you'll find somebody who maybe had a monkey on their back. He's not a bad dude. He just broke the law enough to go to prison, man. And uh, you'll find, you know, you know, you'll you'll conversate with him, man. When you're in confinement, you don't even get that little um, conversation anymore. You just have a, a room, and it really does wonders to your mind. You know, you have to be a very very strong person. I've seen guys on channels say, you know, it won't break them this and that. I'm here to tell you that uh, they're flat out lying to you it will break any man. Um, I mean, I'm, it's one thing to be in prison. It's another thing to be in the prison underneath the prison. You're talking about, I mean, I don't know what your house looks like. You're talking about a few, uh, if you have a walk-in closet, two of those is what you're housed in, okay? Two walk-in closets. Now I want you to insert a, a toilet right there, okay? Put a sink on top of the toilet. Now I want you to put two bunk beds behind the toilet and sink. How much room do you have to walk around in? Not including laying down in the bunk. So your 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 day is literally. Um, they force you to be lazy. They force you to think about why you're in there. And it's not about why just you're in there. It is about you have a chance. This is the only time in your entire life you will have the ice. You're forced. You're isolated to think about the mistakes you've made. You're isolated to think about your family. You're isolated to think about your friends. You're isolated to think about what you've done wrong in life. Um, so look, when it comes to these arguments about death row, I don't know how you feel about it. It's uh, your opinion, leave it in the comments. Um, as far as um, confinement and as far as CM time, okay meaning meaning when people get in trouble in prison you just throw them in a cell for the whole stay okay i'm a big advocate against it okay but at the same time okay i think it's inhumane but at the same time if i have to be have an honest conversation with you it works so it's very tough and i don't think they're ever going to change it um it does work you rare rarely see somebody who has gone to confinement and been back there for a while. When they come out of confinement, they're skinny. They look like, I mean, it's, I'm not trying to be funny here. They look like a crackhead. They go in there, muscles and stuff, tan from the yard, eating a lot of uh, canteen and stuff, you know, and when they come out, they have, it, ask anybody who's been in there. They've lost 25 pounds. They're all scraggly. You don't, you can only shower three days a week. Um, they look rough and, and mentally, they're not the same that they were when they went in. That is, that is just the cold hard facts. Um, I'm telling you, okay? That's a little backstory about confinement. 
when I went in the first time, my DR, my dis disciplinary report said, disrespect to staff. And I did. I t I'm telling you that I was going through some things on the street. What I was doing was I was trying to get a hold of my lady at the time. Um, I, was on a, I was trying to use an inmate's cell phone. I couldn't get a hold of her. She was on the she was in the streets bad. Hey, look, I'm no dummy. I knew it, and uh, I knew it. I knew it was I knew it was happening. But I was always the dude. That it, this this would never happen to me, and it was literally happening. And I'm I'm literally fresh at this camp. So I was I was I kind of snapped, and I I didn't want to snap, but it it just came out, man. Um, you know. Prison guards have a job to do, man. Um, some of them guys take it serious. Some of them don't care. And some of them are just there to aggravate you. And that's what happened. This guy come and aggravate me, man. And uh, he said I had a little peach fuzz on my, on, my, on my chin. And I had to go back to the dorm. He wanted me to run back to the dorm and shave it and run back to the line. And then it's like if you're Usain Bolt or whatever his name is, you can't make that run in time. You can't run that fast. Get a, get a razor because he's watching you and as he sees you running back, he's going to slam the door. Nope, too late. So it's like a game. And, 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 I, and, I'm, and, and I've seen this a million times. So I knew what game he's playing and I, and I just ended it right then and there. Um, I just said some things that I regret to him uh, and what inmates not supposed to say to a, a, a correction officer. Tell him to go F himself, F his mother, and F everything he loves. And then he proceeded to dump truck B through classifications um but that's not where it ended that's where a lot that's probably all you guys can remember on these stories so the end result to this and this whole video is about what happened after that um and this is another thing with confinement okay that doesn't get talked about these channels a lot okay so when he put me back there okay i'm now doing a disrespect to staff it's not a bad dr um it did raise my custody which really sucked because i went to h dorm i wasn't supposed to be back there okay uh, not not somebody like me. I was not supposed to be back there. Okay. Hey, I did it. I survived it I'm not crying about it. I'm just explaining it So what he put me when he initially dumped truck me and he brings me back there He put a hit on me. Okay um, You know not a hit for my life or nothing like that, but a hit it's a prison hit um, It's just uh, look he He brought me back there and I disrespected him in front of a lot of other inmates people were laughing um, and he was not a CEO that people did that too okay i was new at the compound i didn't really even know all this yet i just was going through some stuff so um look he put a hit on me man um and i did not i've heard how treacherous this confinement was at this camp and uh dudes in confinement were doing sign language to me and telling me dude You, dude, you effed up. Don't you, don't you know Frenchie and Smith? They come back here. They're like notorious COs in confinement. Okay, and I, I was scared. I'm not gonna lie to you, because I knew the hit was on me. Okay, so I went back there for. I went, I went back there for disrespect to staff. Okay, but by the time I got out of there, I had so many additional DRs added on, and the the way that they did it was so dirty. It's they really they really pencil ports me. Okay, it's YouTube. I gotta watch what I say. They really pencil ports me. A lot of people don't know confinement. A confinement. A confinement officer can write you a DR and hold hold it on you. It's like a hold. So you're about to get out, and he has you going to the DR hearing, and then him himself can drop it, drop the DR. So you go to confinement court, and then they drop it. But what that does is if, if, if you are out in confinement for 28 days on a 30 day stay, you, you're gonna get out in two days, right? But if they write a DR on you, it has to go through classification, it has to do this and that, you have to go to the kangaroo court in front of uh, in front of, of, of the little committee there. But so on the 30th day, you're supposed to get out, but you have another pending DR. So you don't get out. So you, know, you have to wait, whatever it is, the next DR court, which could be that Tuesday or Thursday, and then and then and then here you go walking walking the DR court and it's dropped. So you go back to the, go back to your cell. You've already served your time for the DR, and you just waited on this bogus DR, and you got another DR written to me that night. No shirt on, whatever else, and it's so slick. It, it's not on your DR history. So 
if the warden, if I was to write a kite to the warden and try to explain what I'm explaining to you now, he's going to pull up my history. He's going to be like, you only have the one DR. It's very complicated when this happens. It, it, it's a real hit. Um, but that was happening, man. And uh, Frenchie and Smith, they are notorious, uh, notorious confinement officers back at this institution, Holmes. Um, so they were doing that to me. And uh, listen, I, I tapped. Okay, I tapped. Um, they were on me. They were on me. Okay, and uh, um, sooner or later they 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 were they were pencil porking me. But sooner or later they they would speak to me. They come to the window. Okay, and uh, on their you have to be very convict with this. What you know? You come to the window. You say, "Hey, we heard you know you disrespect one of our friends." And, and what I did is I handled this really, really, really good because I got Frenchie and Smith off me. What I did was I went to the window. I said, yes, sir, I'm going through some things. And they're like, well, what's that? You know, they have no idea what I'm about to say. So what I said was a little bit of a lie and some truth. Okay. What I, it was very fast. I said, hey, my dad died. Okay. My dad died. I'm going through some things. Because if I was going to tell him, um, if I was to tell him what was really going on with, with a woman, these guys know all the prison videos. They're COs, okay? They're not stupid, okay? They're, he would be then clowning on me about uh, Jody getting my uh, old lady, okay? Uh, he'd, be, he'd be clowning on me, okay? And uh, it would make the stay way worse. So... The fib was my dad just died, but the truth was he was murdered, okay? Uh, that's the truth. People, Some people here know that uh, I have a backup channel, it's a redhead stepdad, and I do a video, uh, and it's an intro video, it, it explains that, okay? If you, did, if you didn't know that, smash the subscribe. It's down there on the featured channels, below everything on the homepage. You also know, if you've been watching this channel currently, I've been out there um, with the media, okay? And currently with the Gabby Petito case, you know, the media uh, asked me for my first and last name, okay? Um, I did a little bit of a lie, okay? I, I, I told them the first name, but I told them my last name was Marcus because I, I do know that the media, um, you know, will, will they, they asked me, can they use this on something? And I said, uh, yeah, that's fine, I don't care. Once you get them permission with your first and last name, they could then take my words, rewrite them, and make me a monster, and I've given them permission. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a dumb, convict here okay uh so i i just gave him a, a bogus last name okay um it was very fast it was sporadic okay I, and then they interviewed me again if you watched the live and one guy interviewed me first and then about four people came with cameras and i said hey hey yeah i'll do the interview can i just give you my first name and they said yeah that's fine then there's all these cameras and microphones in my face and they still ask me for my last name so i i ran with the fake one okay it's the same instance here when the guy comes to the window and, and he's fishing, okay? I, I Okay, so so my dad did die. And, and the reason I went with that is because he's gonna look me up and everything else. And then uh, I believe he did because uh, him and Smith, Frenchie and Smith looked me up because after that day, they their whole attitude against me was completely changed. Completely changed. Um, I don't know if they, they, they felt bad for me or anything like that. Now my dad died, but years way before I went to prison, okay? But I just, I just used it as you know, almost like uh, reverse psychological, uh, whatever the word is on them. Because look, I did disrespect their friend. His friend did put a hit on me. They were pencil porking me, but I switched it all up. Now, a lot of inmates in that situation, when the dude comes to the window after all that I just said, most dudes are gonna sell that dude out or not know how to handle that. I, at this point, was able to get them off me, okay? And uh, I'm telling you, they, I, I have a feeling they looked me up. I have a feeling they confirmed that my dad died. All that good stuff, okay? Not really, but you get what I'm saying. Because they were, they let off, off me, okay? All of a sudden, no more uh, DRs, okay? Um, and they were kind of like, uh, ha ha kiki with me, okay? And I'm peeping it. Um, you know, after, after all this said that I'm telling you, the hits and stuff, I got into a fight with... Uh, well, not a fight. I uh, well, yeah, I did. Listen, I had I had many roommates in confinement. Okay, I've told a story about the white dude and the homosexual came asking for him. I came out of my room. There's another uh, black dude. He was a blood, 
And, uh, and then I had another dude, I do not think I've told this story yet, so I will get into it very shortly, but just to give you a quick sneak peek, he was a psych patient, okay? The dude had a lot of time. I spoke about this on, I didn't tell it to you guys, but I spoke about this on Florida Prison Talk. This guy had a lot of time, he was a bug, okay? He had like 25 years. He was a big, big uh, black dude, inmate. Uh, I say he's about 230, and at the time I was weighing about, I don't know, 209 pounds, I was ripped. Um, but we got into it, man, and we all we almost physically got into it. We, we were screaming at each other. Because for the simple fact, he kept asking me what he thought. Remember, that double, that double walk-in closet you have, that when we, we added a bunk bed, we added a toilet, and we added a sink. He kept asking me every 15 minutes what he thought was going to happen to his case when he had, when he brought it to uh, to a, a pilot court. And I'm not trying to be like nasty or nothing, but like I gave him my honest opinion. Okay, I don't know who's watching this video. I don't know where you're from, but if you ask me, if you put some rims on your car and you say, "Hey Matt, what do you think about my my new rims?" I would give you my honest opinion that first time. Okay, I would say, "Hey, look, they look great. They're shiny." They're cool, they match the color, I like them, this and that. If you ask me the same question every 15 minutes when I can't escape you, we're gonna have a problem. Just take the first uh, initial response and be happy with it. I said, I, 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 so this guy says, what's gonna happen? What do you think's gonna happen? I'm, first off, I'm not a legal expert, analyst or lawyer. I said, hey man, I hope that you do good, you have a chance. In my heart, I didn't feel that because he's letting me read all his personal law work. I didn't feel that, but I just told him that. I don't want to, look, I didn't want to mess the dude's head up. He has 25 years, okay? But after asking me over and over and over and over and over, I just snapped. And I said, dude, you are screwed. When you go out the court, you're probably going to get life. You know, and then he got into it with me. And then, so the point of this is Frenchie Smith come to the window again as we're like, as we're about to like really go through it with each other, me and this man, they, 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 he, he's standing up with his back towards them. So the window is behind this guy's back. Here goes them. They're walking behind it. I'm arguing with the guy and I could see them. And like, this is after we, we were all right with each other. I'm arguing with this guy. I look up and then the dude just looks at me when he walks to the window, he's walking by and he went, he pretty much said, go ahead and do what you got to do. You know, um, confinement is uh, is real nasty, man. Um, you have to know how to survive back there. Um, you know, I didn't get, I didn't fight that dude that day, and and uh, thankfully, okay. Look, I'm 210 pounds, eight pounds shredded. He's 230. Man, two big men start start fighting in that closet. The problem is, I had you put the toilet and the bunk beds in there. But what I forgot to tell you is, now you have to fight somebody who's 230 pounds and you're surrounded by steel and concrete. Hey, good luck with that. Good luck with that. No matter if you win, lose, or draw, you're coming out banged up. Um, and they, they didn't care because they didn't have, they didn't like the dude either. It's, uh, it's very, um, look, there's gonna be a lot more confinement videos. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know the recap of that. Um, it's how I got out of my head. To make, to make meat and potatoes out of this, to get out of the hits that were put on me, okay? Again, I did not know these confinement officers from a hole in the wall, okay? I had to learn about them. Uh, I, knew what, I knew I was at this facility. I heard people talking about it. But when I disrespected their buddy, this dude, it's a small town. I, I've, I've been through this too with videos. It's a country town. Um, on days off, I'm sure the guy that I cussed out initially to go to confinement, if they all have the same, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure of it. I'm willing to bet money. All of them been to the same Super Bowl party before. And you don't think they, they have sat and, and drank beers and uh, sat there and said, hey man, um, look, we're in confinement now. So when, when, when if inmates try you, let us know. You don't think, you honestly can't sit here and watch this video and put two and two together. I'm telling you it goes down. Okay, I'm telling you it goes down. Um, you know, I just wanted to recap that. Uh, Another reason I wanted to recap that is if you've been following the channel or you're new, I've been I'm going to wrap this up right quick. I have notes of my prison stories, okay? A, there's a notebook, okay? I grabbed it today to see which one I'm going to put on the camera. 
and I have a note, okay, and I have this one here. Okay, I didn't want to lose this note. Uh, I had, you know, I'd be working and, write, and writing something down that I thought about, this story here. Okay, and I would write on whatever I can grab, and I have a big envelope. I recently made a, a binder so I can't lose my notes, and this one fell on the floor, so that's the, that's the story we get today. If you're still watching, smash a like. Um, I appreciate everybody, man, and uh, share the video, and uh, let me know how you feel about it, man. Um, if you have people in confinement, um, if you have people in prison or even in jail, incarcerated, whatever, make sure they're doing the right thing. Make sure their mental state is good. Um, if they happen to go to confinement, um, please, please hold them down. Hold them down. Um, because you never know what's on their mind. Um, and it would take much more than a video for me to explain that. But um, take it from a big map, man. Uh, and on that one, we're out. Stay safe, stay solid, and stay out. And always stay real. Who said white boys can't jump? Subscribe. Gotcha.